Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And I just finished unboxing the new Galaxy Z Flip 5 from Samsung. I can link to that below so you can watch it after this video. But in this one, we are going to unbox the new Z Fold 5, the phone that turns into a tablet. I will quickly show off what comes in the box and then of course get some hands-on with this new phone. I do have the Z Fold 4 here as well, so I can put them side to side so you can see the differences. The pre-order is live for both the Flip and the Fold. I can link to them down below. And if you pre-order, you can get upgraded to the 512 gig version. And with trade-in value, you can get up to $900 off the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and $1,000 off the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Again, all links down below. I do wanna point out, I will have a lot more content on this phone, the Flip, the new Tab S9 Ultra, the new Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. So be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when those videos go live. Here is the latest flagship foldable phone from Samsung, the Galaxy Z Fold 5. This is the icy blue color. However, there are some really cool options that you can choose from, including some exclusive online ones. Like I said, I will link to that down below to check out those colors. They're more of a matte instead of a glossy color. They look really good. Inside the box, standard getting started guide, SIM ejection tool, and a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable for charging. By the way, I also got my hands on the new Slim S Pen case from Samsung. Really excited to show this off. That was quick. On to our Z Fold 5. Peeling this off right away reveals that display, flipping it over. Quick look at that icy blue color, which I actually think was probably one of my favorites aside from those exclusive online colors. Anyways, I'm gonna boot this phone up and while it turns on, we're gonna take a closer look at the hardware. There is an all new flex hinge and you'll notice a difference that I'll show in a little bit that there is no gap here. It sits flush on top of each other, which is better, less dirt, dust to get into the device and just looks a little bit more clean. It, but down at the bottom, you got a microphone, USB type C port for charging, one of your speakers moving along. On the right side of the device, you have your power button with an embedded fingerprint scanner, your volume rockers. On the left side of the phone, you've got your SIM ejection tool. Also make note of the camera bump which is, you know, fairly minimal overall. And then up towards the top, you've got more microphones and your other speaker. Very quickly, let's show off the opening mechanism. Sits flat as expected and closing it again flat on top of each other. Close look at the icy blue color in the Z Fold 5 and our triple camera setup where you have a 50 megapixel main sensor, 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens that zooms in up to three times optically. As promised, side by side with the Z Fold 4, you'll notice the spine is slimmer on the Z Fold 5 up towards the top attributing to the way it closes, as you can tell, you can actually look through right here, which isn't really that big of a deal, but again, it doesn't have the dust resistance, so this helps keep dust out. It does have water resistance, however, so you do get an IPX8 rating on the device. Also, the camera setup's a little bit different, triple camera setup, but that flash is in a different location. Just overall, a little more slim, a little more streamlined, of a device. Anyways, our phone is all booted up. I'm going to run through the startup process to put anything that's noteworthy. Currently transferring my data onto this device. Like I said, I will have other videos on this phone, so be sure to subscribe. Anyways, face recognition is an option, but we are going to set up our fingerprint scanner. It does want us to open our phone to continue the process, which is a little interesting, but that's totally fine. Let's go ahead and just set our thumb on down and continue through. Nice subtle vibration when you do set your thumb down. This is, in my opinion, probably the best way to add a fingerprint scanner on a folding phone like this, have it embedded in the fingerprint scanner. Um, otherwise, you know, it can be a little tricky if you have it in the internal display. It's almost like another action to move your thumb. So I get it. Uh, anyways, fingerprint added. We can add more if we'd like. Taking care of your phone, just letting you know not to scratch it with your keys. Uh, again, it is water resistant. There is a pre-installed screen protector do not peel that off. <laughs> that is there on purpose. Also, only use an S Pen design for the Galaxy Fold because there is an S Pen case that I can show off. I actually got hands-on with it. I'll show it off in just a second. 
Anyways, you're all set, ready to go. Let's hit finish, let it load through, and we are on our home screen. It's already transferring all my data over. All right, the transfer is complete. My phone is all set up and ready to go. Can you tell which one is which between the Z Fold 5 and Z Fold 4? It's actually kind of hard, uh, you know, for me, because I'm looking for it and I know I can sort of tell the right one's the Fold 4 because that screen sort of uh, angles left to right just a tiny bit, only because I'm looking for it. Otherwise, the Z Fold 5 sits completely flat. And with the phones unfolded, there's a look. You can see, you know, very similar aesthetically. So pretty iterative in terms of the overall design language of the phone. And you know, that's okay because this does have a premium design overall. I am glad they updated the hinge though. Worth noting that the Z Fold 5's display does also get brighter than the Z Fold 4. The Fold 5 is thinner and about 10 grams lighter. I'd also like to point out it comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. So you'll notice if coming from the Fold 4, improvements in battery life specifically, and and, you know, some performance and uh, GPU upgrades. You might not have noticed, but it still does have that under display camera technology unchanged from the previous model. Nice that it's there if you know you happen to be on a video call, but definitely in terms of quality, don't wanna be taking selfies with that. Just go ahead and use the rear camera or even the front camera on this front display. Now, I usually wait till a little bit closer to the end to show off the cases, but this one I feel is very important and one a lot of people are going to want to get, the slim S Pen case. And it is much slimmer and uh, smaller, especially in terms of the S Pen, fits much more you know, flat on the device. You do get three replacement tips for the S Pen plus a tool to take the tip off. Pretty easy to just snap the case on, honestly. It also has some tabs sticking out because it has a little bit of an adhesive to help it stick even further. I didn't take that off, but I will, just for the sake of time and everything. Anyways, here it is, that S Pen case. So it says slide to pop up the S Pen. So all you have to do is sort of push down on this little tab and it pops the back of your S Pen up where you can easily just pull it out of the case and to put it back in, pretty simple. Just go ahead and slide it back where it came from, and there it is. So uh, let's peel this off. So pretty sleek and slim case overall. It leaves the buttons and volume rockers open so you can still press them. Let's take a quick look at the cutouts. Opening it up with the case on, you'll take a look at the back. It opens completely flat sits flush. And with the phone open, if you do want to grab that S Pen, you can just sort of pop it down and pull it out. It can be done with one hand. It's going to take a little practice. Don't get me wrong. But yes, you can use the S Pen on the internal and external display. Quick close up, it does have a button for some various actions. The phone also recognizes an S Pen is connected, so it brings up this window with various shortcuts. Here are the shortcuts that pop up. They are customizable. You can write notes, write on the screen, live message, translate, pen up. Samsung has done a great job with support for the S Pen and various applications. Opening up the Notes app, if I wanted to write subscribe, it's really hard with the camera in front of me. There we go, I can do so just like that. And up here, actually, if you tap on that, you can go into split screen, you can expand the app, you can contract the app. So if you wanted to put it into a little bubble, that's possible. A lot of multitasking capabilities. So let's actually put it in split screen like so. And it brings up specific, all of your apps actually. You can have custom recent apps or most used ones. Again, we just unboxed it so I don't have most used ones yet. But hey, we can go to the calculator, do some calculations. If we go into the camera application, you do have the option for that ultra wide angle lens or you can zoom in all the way up to 30 times if you'd like to. That is digital zoom, but three times is telephoto. Now that we've taken a couple pictures, what I wanna do is go back to our dual screen app. You can go to all applications here in the bottom left. So again, multitasking is fantastic. So if I go to the gallery app, drag it there, I've got three apps open at once now. So what I let's go to this picture, which I took of the Galaxy Tab uh, S9 Ultra, and I want to select it, pull it out, I can quickly drag it on over to the Notes app. Change it, change the size, move it around, really customize, and you'll notice there it is on both applications. Let's close out of the calculator. 
You do have various S Pen features like Air Actions, Air View, S Pen to Text, Quick Notes, Screen Off Memos, so a lot of options. Going into Labs, you can have multi-window for all apps, even ones that don't support it. Flex Mode Panel, definitely turn that on to take advantage of when you use the phone like that. You even get some new multi-window gestures like swipe for split screen, swipe for pop-up view. Uh, with swipe for split screen, when you're in an app, I believe you use two fingers and swipe on over, boom. There you go. You can open up a separate application. So if we go into that gallery, there it is. Now we've got two applications open. Anyways, there is a lot that goes into this phone and I will cover a lot more. So be sure to subscribe so you're notified when those videos go live. As usual, Samsung has done a great job with their displays. Uh, great resolution, the colors really pop with that dynamic AMOLED. And of course, motion smoothness. You can go all the way up to 120 Hertz. If you wanna save some battery life, you can bump it down to 60, but definitely nice having 120 Hertz on both the internal and external screens. So anyways, that is everything I wanted to talk about for now with the Z Fold 5. I know this was quite a bit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to click that thumbs up button if you did. Be sure to